This is Through a Therapist Eyes. We are changing our topic today that we had planned on doing. We had planned on talking about parenting, and we're going to push that off uh, in light of recent events. So part of what we're able to do on this show is talk about recent events as things come up, and boy, Craig, they certainly have come up. We are changing the topic today in honor of Bobby McKeithen, who is a child who is now deceased due to being shot. He is also an accused bully. And we are changing the topic of the show today in honor of Jatuan Coffey. He is a child that was bullied, a child who evidently shot another child. In addition, in honor of all those lost in Pennsylvania synagogue, two article quotes. The first situation, the conflict began with bullying and escalated out of control. Wilcox said as fear took over, the young person brought a gun to solve the problems. Article quote in the second situation, armed with an AR-15 style assault rifle, and at least three handguns, a man shouting anti-Semitic slurs opened fire inside a Pittsburgh synagogue Saturday morning, killing at least 11 congregates and wounding four police officers and two others, the authorities said. Craig, I just feel like we need to talk about it. I think you're right. I'm glad you decided to change the topic. So I'm Chris Gazdick. You are Craig? Craig Graves, that's All right. right. And welcome to Through a Therapist's Eyes, the podcast, where we invite you to see the world through the lens of a real mental health and substance abuse therapist. The goal is to create emotional growth through the medium of this podcast. Please be aware it's not the delivery of therapy directly in any way. Feedback and discussion is definitely looked for on throughatherapistseyes.com, the blog tab. The emotional human experience. Let's figure this out together. Because uh, we need to. <laughs> we, we need to. Uh, sponsoring agency, Metrolina Psychotherapy, Belmont, North Carolina, serving children, adolescents, adults, and couples. They were starting in July 1, 2010. And they are at metpsych.com, 704-461-8253. I don't know, man. That's a heck of an intro. What are you thinking? It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. crazy week. It, yeah, it's mind blowing to me how how often this kind of thing happens today. Um, it really is. It's just uh, it just leaves you scratching your head and in dismay. Right. Yeah, I mean it. It it, it tends to leave you speechless a little bit. Um, uh, this is a topic that I've actually. There's been a few times I've really had something in my mind cooking for a long time and. Awesomely now, a little bit of a platform to raise what I think are cool thoughts. And this one is uh, bullying, actually. We'll talk about it in a little bit, but I actually think, Craig, it needs to be renamed. Bullying needs to be renamed? Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that more in a bit, but because it's only, it's an incomplete title. It's a really incomplete title. Um there's uh well, well let's go ahead and cover that now that you know there's there's something called domestic violence and we understand some of the cycles of domestic violence and when you hear domestic violence how many people in that situation are you thinking about really when i think about domestic violence i think about a man and a woman or a, a boyfriend and a girlfriend and the That's key the word kind of is situation. and and when you think of bullying what do you think i think about kids in high in, in school yeah you know? kids or kid, it, it, bullying. I feel is an incomplete title, primarily because just in like in domestic violence, there are two people involved in this thing. Bullying isn't being picked on. Bullying isn't really just having some mean kid. Bullying is a relationship that gets developed. Developed. Did I say that well? You're developing a relationship between two kids, not just a situation. You're right. Everybody's been picked on. Yeah. I, I feel like not everyone's been bullied per se. Okay, then maybe you can define what the difference in being picked on and bullied is. So picked on is somebody got picked on and you got into a fight even or, or you got made fun of, we made jokes. Bullying to me is really an incomplete term because there's a kid that has almost a criminal element 
hurting emotionally or physically another child and another child has a whole set of circumstances in their head and in their heart and one of the bullet points i wanted to put out here is that both sides of a conflict need help yeah i would i would tend to agree with that and bullying i think limited knowledge of and in bullying i think of you know hey we need to we need to we need to punish that bully yeah you don't think of the kid who needs help to figure out what do i do so we'll talk more about that but that's that's and, an opening shot. And we're going to kind of talk about conflict resolution today too, right? Correct. The three steps of conflict revolution. Revolution? Did I say it again? <laughs> you did do that again, I can't man. believe that. I was saying that earlier today. <laughs> so for those listening around the country, I'm sure we've all heard about Pennsylvania. I want to give you some basic facts about what happened and, and, and hit us here right at, right at home. There's a place called Butler High School where we had a child killed with a gunshot. And uh, it, it's, it, it led into my thought of, of bullying because it couldn't be a more powerful depiction on why it's such a horrifying issue and also not so quite understood. For years, I've been talking about this three-step conflict resolution. You, basically, it solves any conflict between you and another person. Because it drives me nuts when we look at somebody and say, hey, you know what? Sometimes the bully just needs to get hit in the head, punched in the face. Or, or, or we tell people, hey, sometimes you just got to learn how to walk away. And, I, and I'm not really disagreeing with either of those two statements, but I'm going to say that they are inadequate. They're inadequate. We need to know how to deal with conflict much more fully than, you know, just put somebody on the ground, you know, or just... Be a passive person. I've said before on the show, you won't find a whole lot of passivity about me. Uh, you won't find a whole lot of that. I'm not a doormat therapist. You might have a myth out there that we just advocate for peace. Well, I've actually come up with a phrase in my brain that peace at all costs is no peace at all. Peace at all costs is no peace at all. Correct. You don't have peace when you... Well, that's a whole other show. <laughs> This kid in Bel- or Belmont, this kid in uh, Butler High School. And Butler's in Charlotte, North Carolina. Right. Yeah. Authorities said bullying led to the shooting, and the conflict started several days, make that a point, before the fatal counter. The police department in Matthews, about 12 miles southeast of Charlotte, said 16-year-old freshman Jashwan Coffey, Kofi, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. I don't want to be disrespectful about that was taken into custody by a school resource officer about 10 minutes after the shooting at Butler High School. Police Captain Stateson Terrell said Kofi Coffee admitted the shooting to a teacher, and the teacher helped arrange for his surrender to the police. So, from this, it, like, dude shot the fellow student and turned himself in to a, wow. to a teacher. Wow. And the teacher helped him to turn himself to the authorities. I had not heard the details of that. Terrell said a school resource officer who was in the building heard a commotion in the hallway adjacent to the cafeteria at 7.14 a.m. and saw students running away. He arrived at the scene seconds later and started rendering aid to the wounded student. Three other officers were on scene within minutes. Hear, hear to the first responders. Hear, hear to them. So before we get into talking about some of this, I want to dispel a myth. We're going to talk about bullying again. Because I, I really feel like in the, in, the, in the case of, you know, Pennsylvania and, and all of these things going on in our country. And, Craig, I've heard you say many times, man, I don't remember ever going to school and having these types of things. I did a little research. History of school shootings in the United States. Can we understand that this is not new? Can we understand that we need to learn from our history? We need to understand that we have been doing the same cyclical stuff over and over again for a long, flipping time. In the 1700s, I don't know when our birthday was exactly, 17, 14, what was, what's the phrase with Columbus, Christopher Columbus? 1492, sailed the ocean blue. Yeah. Four, is that right? Yeah. That's, so, the, that's the phrase. Uh, 100,000, 200,000 years later, we, we, or 100 years later, or 200 years later, we... I don't know, formed our country around this time in the 1700s. My point is, this has been going on since day one. Hmm. The earliest known United States shooting happened on a school property was in the Pontiac Rebellion School Massacre 
on July 26, 1764, where four Lenape American Indians encountered the schoolhouse near present-day Greencastle, Pennsylvania. Shot killed schoolmaster Enoch Brown and killed nine or ten children. Reports vary. Only two children survived that day. Okay. Wow, right? Yeah, but was, was that not more like the, you just said, the Indians attacked? No, 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 no. They were just, they were just Lenape American Indians. I don't know what that is, but it goes on and on. Okay. I mean, look at, they, the audience can't see this sheet, but look at this sheet, man. Okay. okay. There is, it is oh, an yeah, amazing a, array. Chris has a thick, sh- a, a thick stack of papers. Yeah. That are examples of school shootings throughout history. If you, you guys can't see it, but that's what he's going through. I right would here. read probably for about a half an hour if I met, read really fast. I got some highlights that I looked at. In April 30th, 1866, editorial, the New York Times argued against students carrying pistols. The editorial, you know, arguing against students carrying pistols, citing, quote, Pistols being dropped on the floor at balls or being exploded in very inconvenient ways. A boy of 12 has his pantaloons, pantaloons, I guess those are pants, made with a pistol pocket. And this at the boarding school filled with boys who, we suppose, do or wish to do the same thing. We would advise parents to look into it and learn whether shooting is to be a part of the scholastic course which may be practiced on their boys. Or else we advise them to see that their own boys are properly armed with the most approved and deadly pistol, and that there may be an equal chance, at least, of their shooting as of being shot. This is the debate. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, though. Is, you, okay, so you got the evidence right here that this goes way back to the 1700s, but is it ha- did, did it happen then as frequently as it does now? Because it's like now, it's almost like you hear about something once a week, somebody getting gunned down at school. The audience can't see it, but Craig, look, man. Okay. Every so are, every it does, year. It does look like, well, but the best 19, between 1900 and 1900 and 1930s. We got 02, 03, 06, 07, 08, 08. Here's the highlight. May 18th, 1927, Bath, Michigan. School treasurer Andrew K. Hugh, after killing his wife and destroying his house and farm, blew up the Bath Consol- Consolidated School by detonating dynamite in the basement of the school, killing 38 people, mostly children. He then pulled up to the school in his Ford car and blew up the car Killing himself and four others. On and on it goes. A couple of other, I'll just be real quick. July 4th, 1940. Valhanna, New York, angered by the refusal of his daughter Melba, 15 years old, to leave a boarding school and return to his home. Joseph Marshall, 47, visited a school and shot and killed the girl. April 9th, 1952. A New York uh, 15 year old boarding school student shot a dean rather than relinquish. Pin up, listen to this, because the dean was taking pin up pictures of the school, uh, girls in bathing suits. So he shot the dean. Wow. Right? It really does go on and on and on with this stuff. Uh, you know, April 20th, 1961, Illinois teacher Josephine Keene, 45, is sexually assaulted and stabbed to death inside a state storeroom in the Lewis Chapel and Elementary School in Chicago. Lee Arthur Hester, a 14 year old. Student is later convicted of the murder and sentenced to 55 years in prison. 14 years old, sexually assaulting his teacher. Hmm. Uh, there are some other highlights. It's taken too long to even go through the little highlights that I got from this. In 1992 through 2000, it was a big note that, uh, no, in, in 70s was, uh, was a big increase in violence. In the 80s, when you and I grew up, and one of the reasons why I think a lot of people have this understanding that it's all new and didn't happen. It actually notes in the 80s, we, it was in a dramatic decline of school shootings. Dramatically went up in the 2000s, noted as well. Well, we it's need- got, there's got to be more awareness now, too, with 24-7 news channels. And, and because of the more recent uptick, I'm fearful of people now with sort of a psychological thing of, you know what, if I believe I can do it, I'll do it. Yeah. So it is in a little bit of alarm in that regard. Yeah. If I yeah, believe you know, and see it, I'm guess- more likely to do it. We know with suicidal and homicidal ideations that we talked about not too long ago, the, one of the primary questions is, do you know anybody that's actually done this? Because it makes you more likely to do it. Very interesting. It's a primary screening factor. You know, in my mind, I've always thought 
things are different now. But maybe not. Maybe maybe that document you have there points out that it's been the same all along. But I, I do remember guys having hunting rifles and shotguns in the back of their pickup trucks at my high school. Nobody got shot. I was from West Virginia. I know. Yeah, nobody got shot, man. Yeah, they did. Not at our. I mean, not anywhere. Not, in, not anywhere near where we are. I, I know, right? I, I think it's it's something that needs more. It has a lot of dialogue on right now. It has a lot of press and and a lot of issues with it. I really and I and I was curious what your what your take was going to be as I presented some of this. I purposely didn't show him, guys, to to see because I think we've differed with this a little bit. Yeah, I, I, just if you don't know, I've always thought this is a fairly new thing. I thought Columbine in 99 kind of kicked off the whole school shooting thing. And Chris had always argued that it had been going on since the beginning of the country. Obviously, he was right, and uh, I was wrong. Well, I, I had a tip from somebody that I knew and I heard talking from the Charlotte SWAT team. Okay. And he did trainings, and he, and he put that in my head, which shocked me just the same. Because I think all of our population, Craig, we don't think long ago. We don't think history. And our population, about our age, you know, 30s, 40s, and 50s, we think Columbine is when this started. Yeah, well, again, I don't think there was as much awareness. You didn't have CNN and all, all these news channels who were looking for the next big story. And, uh, you know, now these school shootings get national media attention, you know, the gun, the gun control lobbies. Um, you know, fueled by these things. So they get a lot of press now. They don't, and whereas maybe in the past they did not. Yeah. I, I think that's definitely a part of it. I mean, we see it. But again, it occurs to me, we see it, so we do it. You don't see it, you don't do it. Could be, yeah. Could be. So let's talk about conflict resolution. You know, we, if we're not going to be shooting. We're not going to be, you know, doing crazy things. We, we do need to understand a little bit more fully, what are you going to tell your kid when you're dealing with bully issues, or as I might like to rename it, and I began to explain that, personal abuse or person abuse, because I think that's more fully describing two people in the relationship that has developed. In this Butler case that we highlighted in Charlotte, there was a relationship. This conflict had been going on. I think these kids had a relationship for, that article said several days. I would imagine it was even longer probably been kind of going on all year I, I would be surprised if it had not i mean i'd be surprised if it went from zero to to, to shooting the kid in seven the kid, days the kid was being bullied picked on hurt harmed emotionally and he knew that there was going to be a fight and he came packing literally wow literally wow we need a better answer than that yeah i, I you know i <laughs> you're right that is not the solution obviously so I've just developed a thought when I was working on this show. Fighting rarely works physically because we fight emotionally just as much. So we ain't going, we're going to fight about things. We're going to disagree about things. But we've got to have a good thing working it out. Fighting rarely works physically when cognition is involved. So we're cognitive people and we need to use our God-given ability to do so while managing emotional content raging inside us, especially at the time it's raging, unquote. Just came to me as I was working on this show. And, um, yeah, as advertised there a little bit ago, Craig, three-step process. So let's pivot to that because we, we got to teach our kids to, to do more than just learn how to walk away. We got to teach our kids to do more than just, you know, popping somebody, um, which probably stands to start this with. So before we start talking about the three steps to conflict revolution, <laughs> revolution, <laughs> um, what, what you're going to teach us or what you're going to say to us is something that I could tell my kid if he were being bullied? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm looking forward to hearing what you got to say then. Because first to be said, you have to know how to defend yourself. Again, I'm not passive, and I want the audience, particularly uh, you know, men that are living out there, I think we have a, a big macho attitude about this stuff. Listen, I'm not going to let anybody hurt me, and I'm not going to tell my kid to let anybody hurt him. So you, if, it's, if it's about protecting yourself physically, then take somebody down. I like to demonstrate this in my office, and I'll make that point to kids. And I say, if you charge me, I know how to handle my body. I'm going to take a sidestep. I'm going to take the back of your head, and I'm going to fling you in the wall. <laughs> and then I'm going to back out. And if you want to do me again, I'll maybe get a knee into your gut this time and put you to the floor, and I'm going to back away. I mean, you've got to know how to defend you know, yourself, no doubt. 
Yeah, you do have to. You do, right? No, and that, that was kind of conflict yeah. resolution when I was in high school. Yeah, I Somebody know. got a beating, you know. <laughs> we had it a, was over. They yeah, shook hands. Yeah, exactly. and were, they were buddies the next day. Hey, we had a guy on the wall because he was being mean to a girl. I remember that day very clearly. That's uh, noble. Moral oh, courage, man. right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you call it. Yeah. These three steps you've probably heard before, and but you put them in combination. I think we have a more thorough way to deal with. Really, any conflict that we've got, Craig, we tell kids this stuff, but this happens in boardrooms, this happens in playgrounds, this happens in neighborhoods and homeowners meetings, all sorts of places, and we don't think about them. I'm going to say the three steps, and you're going to realize how simple they are. You do them in combination, starting at step one, you're usually going to be done with the conflict. And if you have to go back to step two, well, that's fine. It's designed to create a de-escalation. And then step three is an absolute reality that with somebody else, you gain objectivity. Interested? Yeah. Solves any conflict I'm going to maintain. Any conflict. <laughs> any conflict. It's crazy. Step one. Tell the person to stop doing what they're doing to harm you. Okay. That's, I, a, that's a no-brainer. You know? <laughs> yeah. But so often we do not do that. We don't do it. Step two, you back off and you give the person space, either physically or emotionally. It sounds simple. Step three, you get an objective party involved. That might be their friends or your friends. You make it an avoiding, you make it where you avoid a one-on-one -on -one man up, man down situation. Maybe that's an authority figure, but I want to say that's even a biblical uh, uh, suggestion where you bring in a, a person, not an elder or a pastor. They are helpful too, though. Any third party will resolve a conflict, Craig, between you and me in a way that is objective. And that's what we do. Sounds simple enough? Sounds, yeah, it sounds really simple. I mean, to implement these things when you're ragingly mad, scared off your rear end, uh, is very difficult to do. So you said something that's interesting. People don't, say, people don't tell them to stop? No. No. I'll give you a real example that, that happened to me. Grade school, right? Uh, you know, everybody's been picked on. Yeah. <laughs> I was not a confident, strong kid at a certain point in my life, uh, particularly when I was going through family divorce, and it was a tough time for me. And I'll never forget this kid was, uh, whatever he was doing, you know how it was, spitballs or flicking your ear or something. I, I don't know. I don't remember what he was doing. I think, I think he was, like, tapping my, my desk, you know, behind me, just, just intimidating me. And, I mean, it, it, like, made me freeze. Yeah. It just made me freeze. I didn't know what to do. What would have happened if I'd have stood up, turned around, and told him, would you stop touching my desk, please? That's really annoying when I'm in class. Backed up three steps and just sat there. <laughs> but you were scared to do that because you thought it would be repercussions or what? I can't tell you that. I don't remember. I mean, you know, I don't know. You know, that's funny you say that. When I was in middle school or junior high school back in my day, I had a similar situation. There was a couple guys that would come around at lunchtime and take your change. You know, when you pay for your lunch, you had to pay, you know, 25 <laughs> Literally? Bucks. Yeah. Hey, give me your change. Oh. And these were some scary dudes, right? right. So, yeah, I gave them my change. Absolutely. I never, I never thought about telling them no or to, or to stop or anything like that. I'm afraid to get punched out. And that is an immediate fresh reaction because you have not heard these three steps, Craig, and thank you for that because I'm telling you, a lot of people are probably having your initial reaction. What do you mean? People don't say no, stop doing what you're doing to me? Yeah. We don't. Yeah, that's interesting. We, we don't do that. Yeah. And you're sitting in a boardroom and you get undercut by somebody that's sitting at the table. You look across to the person and say, will you stop commenting on things that I haven't even said yet, please? And let me finish my sentence. I would appreciate it. Yeah, so in my mind, I'm thinking about these school situations that we're talking about, but you just said in the boardroom. So you could use this conflict resolution anywhere, right? Anywhere there's a conflict between two people. And usually, really, all you've got to do is do the first step. It stops. It arrests the process many times over dead in their tracks people aren't used to being so told no a bully is not used to somebody standing up turning around and proudly and strongly and clearly declaring you need to stop touching my chair okay so 
It's hard to do. Stop doing it, and most of the time it works. Yep. Okay. And then the back up, give the person space. We just talked about marriage issues last time, right? Yeah. You know, one of the one of the strong things that an engulfment person does, or you know, is is let's let's stop, let's let's deescalate this thing. You don't need to go, you know, for an hour for a conversation, man. You know, so back up, give the person space. Adults out here, you can let your brains after these mics turn off flow around in your brain. Just flow around with all the many ways to to implement each specific step, because there are so many ways on each particular step to 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 creatively and thinking out of the box get out of a state of conflict because otherwise what you do is you say something mean to me i punch you you punch me harder we're on the ground and somebody's choked out it's escalated hope you know some jujitsu at that point i'm screwed guys <laughs> <laughs> craig you don't do that to me craig stop threatening me <laughs> I don't like that you're threatening me right now. Okay, I'll stop. All right, thank you. (laughs) We don't have to go on to step two where we give them space. Honestly, you really don't even have to do that step two, backing off and giving someone space. It really isn't a lot of times any need to de-escalate a situation. Yeah. But when you are de-escalating a situation, you're backing off, giving them space. You bring your voice tone down, and you can talk that way. And it gets to the point where people's emotions come way low with you. It's just a neat way to de-escalate things. Mm-hmm. Raise it up, go loud, go crazy, go jut my neck out at you like this. Doesn't even feel, it feels weird, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It's like, well, he's closer to me now, man. Yeah. <laughs> it does. There's some real powerful emotional things that go on with that. And as I said, even I think there's biblical teachings and such that say, go to the elders, go to people, get somebody. If you really have told the person to stop harming you and you've you've backed off and de-escalated the situation and there's still an ongoing issue over days, over weeks, what have you. Or maybe it is just as simple as, okay, well, we need to go get the teacher to resolve this because I think this, you think that, and we need an, an objective third party. Bring in the judges, right? We're, 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 we're running out of time, but it's funny because... As I said that, Craig, I remember a major debate I had with a kid. Who was it? Brent Kinnicky, I think. Brent Kinnicky. <laughs> you may hopefully listen to the show, man. He was uh, in elementary school, and we were arguing about cars being on the moon. I was like, dude, there ain't no cars on the moon. What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, there are. There are. We were getting into it. And we were getting kind of hot, too, if I remember. <laughs> <laughs> One of us was like, I think it was him. He's like, well, we're going to have to go ask the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so we did. We we did. We went to ask the teacher. She said uh, she got out of it. She said you're both right. Well, there's no cars up there right now, but there have been but vehicles. There were. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was sitting here thinking. Chris, you were wrong that time. I was, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was dead wrong. So I hope that people can take this with some creativity because the issue of school violence and shootings and people dying, really the issue of conflicts that we have in this world today on such a grand scheme are hurting people and people are dying and and really in a lot of ways resolving our differences and celebrating our similarities can lead us to all that we want which is pretty commonly peace and it's not that complicated man start by having a conversation with your child today i challenge everyone in the audience Start by having a conversation today with your child and give them more than punch the bully in the face or learn how to walk away. Don't be mad, son. No, give them more. They need taught. They need to know that there are some things that are involved with behavior and choices and taking action that yeah. they can do. And I'd say this, this is one of those very important conversations. You know, there's some conversations you need to have with your kids that are high up on the list, and this is one of them. Hit those three points for us one more time, Chris, before we close it out. Simply tell the person to stop doing what they're doing when they're hurting you. Many variations of that. Step one. Step two. Back off and give the person space. Many variations of that. Emotionally and physically. Yeah, step three. Get objective people involved. 
outside of just you on one on one. Sound simple? Sounds like gold to me, buddy. Sound hard to do? <clears throat> no. Realize well, I mean, that, that first step is. could be hard. There, there's definitely some intimidation going on there. But, I mean, if that stops most of the conflict, then, then take that step. When I'm worked up and in a conflict with you, I'm not really, as a pursuer, ready to back down and walk away and relieve myself and just check out. I'm wanting to deal with it now. Yeah. That's hard well, it takes, to you know, sit. Some, sometimes it takes courage to say no, though. It, it's, it's hard to sit on a hot topic that's on my heart for maybe a week. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm same, I'm same as you. But if you're in the heat of the moment and you're afraid somebody's going to physically attack you, if you say no, then that's a more difficult situation. But it's well worth it. If it stops most of the conflict, then do it. I would say step three is hard too. I don't want to file a lawsuit on somebody. Yeah, and if you bring somebody else in, you know, I don't want to look stupid. Yeah, you're a wimp for telling on somebody. You're a tattletale. And, you mean and, tell me I can't handle my problems? I got to come to Craig to deal with my problem with Matt? I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But it sounds like some of these alternatives we're hearing about in the news are way worse than anything we're talking about here. Way worse. These three simple things are hard to do. Have a conversation with your kids. Absolutely. All right, we're running up on time. Anything else you want to add to that conversation, Chris, or you want to close her out? We'll talk about it again. Sounds good to me, man. All right, guys. Um, if you have not yet, I would appreciate it if you would go to our website, therapistize.com and sign up for our email list. It's on the home site on the main page there. And all we're going to do is send updates about the show, and uh, we're not going to send you any spam or any special offers or anything <laughs> like that. Just want to keep you updated. Also on that website, you can find. Uh, Links to our social media, Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you are listening and enjoying the show, we would appreciate it if you would subscribe if you haven't already and leave us a five-star review if you're enjoying the content. And tell your friends. Word of mouth is some of the best advertising you can uh, that, a, that, a, that a company or whatever can get, and we would certainly appreciate it if you would tell everybody you know how help great, us grow. How help great us, we help, are. Help us yeah. grow. Really, help <laughs> us grow. It's a good show. Yeah, we appreciate you guys uh, listening. And um, anything else, Chris? Yeah, next time. Uh, I think that we do have a perfect segue in show topic. We have not talked about domestic violent relationships, and I am believing that we do have confirmation of somebody who is going to share uh, their personal, very powerful story. And man, what an amazing thing she's doing with it now after getting out and in recovery. It's a really going to be a good, powerful group discussion. Wow, I did not know that was coming. Sounds like it's going to be a good, a good show. A good, I emailed you. Topic. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little behind on my email. You know, you know how that goes. Gotcha. Anybody who knows me knows I got about 300 emails unread in there. Got you. Holy cow. You just, you just heard that for the first time, Craig? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's going to be good. Okay, Looking yeah. Looking forward to it. Okay, guys. We appreciate you, and I hope you have a good week.